Alright guys, so uh, in this in this video, we're going to continue with uh, with state monads. And again, as I mentioned previously, um, um, I highly recommend uh, reading this paper by Philip Wadler on uh, monads for functional programming. And uh, some of the some of the inspiration, at least for this video, some of the examples that I'm going to use in this in this video has been has been um, uh, inspired from this from this paper. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, now that we have we have this uh, we have an instance of the monad type class created. I'm going to let I'm going to kind of combine what we've been learning so far and uh, put it together in some kind of a really really simple example. So let's say let's say I have I have something called a tick over here. Okay, I'm just going to call some kind of a label some kind of label tick, which apparently happens to be a function. It happens to be a function and it has some kind of a signature, and the signature for this is basically is basically m m of this of this empty empty in this case kind of a cubic okay so what does this mean here what does this actually mean okay so again uh, now before before we started on this entire journey of uh, of, of of monads one of the things that we have been learning or at least at least trying to understand is we have taken a method we have taken a method that has a kind or has a type signature from from a to b and we have been starting to discuss this idea, what if this method were to throw or have some kind of a side effect? If this method were to have some kind of a side effect, then maybe the signature of this method should in some sense reflect what are these side effects that could potentially occur in this method that, uh, that goes from A to B here. So one way to one way to incorporate one way to incorporate these side effects, uh, what was this idea of basically using a monad? So I would say, okay, now I would have this. I would take the signature, and in some sense, the signature would change. It would change. So instead of going from A to B, I would now have this maybe going from A to, in this case, um, some kind of an M, which which just presents some kind of a computational unit that uh, that in some sense is basically the side effect that could occur. And as the side effect occurs, you might in some sense get back get back this that the original value original value b. So as you go from a to b, in the process, some side effect might occur, and the side effect is basically represented by this m, which which in this case is actually a monad. All right. So now what I'm doing here is um, now that I've already created an instance, I've already created an instance of my type constructor m. Which represents which represents some kind of a side effect. It represents some kind of a side effect that could potentially potentially occur. Okay, that is that m over here, and likewise the the actual value the actual value that might the, the actual pure value that might get that might that might be computed from this method over here is represented is represented by by these by these parentheses. Okay, so again, can I can I can I break this up a little bit further? Uh, sure, I can do that uh, because I'm still in my type world here. I'm going to I'm going to say, all right, uh, let's 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 do this. Uh, now I already know this uh, m of these parentheses is just thing but a synonym for this type signature right there. So I can replace this entire thing. I can replace this as saying something that has a type of uh, of state. Okay, I'm just going to take whatever this m of a is and replace m of a with m of these open and closed parentheses, and that's going to be state as a function basically that takes in some kind of a state and returns back to you a tuple where uh, you're going to have this kind there. Okay, now again, keep this in mind the actual value, the actual value that might still get returned in this method is this, is this piece right there. Okay. Okay, and the side effect, this whatever is the side effect that could potentially occur, is basically, in some sense, in some sense, a little, little bit informally, is represented is represented by this by this actual actual method there that takes in a state and returns back to you a tuple that contains within it the actual the actual computed value the actual computed value and followed by some kind of a new state. Okay, that's what takes basically. All right, and uh, can I now make a transition from a type world from a type world to a value world where I can actually create some kind of a value that has this signature. Sure, I can. I can do that now. So I can say tick basically tick is nothing. In this case, tick is nothing, but it's nothing but just a function. It's nothing but just a function right there. It's nothing but just a function. It's just a function that takes in some original state s, 
and it gives you back it gives you back as an output it gives you back as an output a tuple in this case the actual value is nothing but this open and close parentheses and uh, it gives you back some some new state here and um, again i'm just going to say this new state is nothing but let's just take the original state s and let's just add one to it okay and that's why i'm calling it tick here it's just incrementing it's just incrementing my original state by by one now again i understand this this might seem a little bit silly why would i why would i take my original state and why would i increment it by one by by going through all this process of uh, of creating uh, uh, an instance of my of my monad type class. The reason I'm trying to the reason I'm trying to do this is because um, at some point, let's say if I were to uh, if I were to uh, have a, a method, uh, one of the one of the functions that we're looking at um, uh, in Martin original videos uh, was this. Um, it was basically a method that actually went from from A to B and um, and. Uh, but actually, I think we're looking at the division method. We're looking at the division method, and uh, it was basically it took in it took in two two numbers where C and A are basically my numbers over here, and uh, it would give back the it would be it, it would give back the quotient where C, A, and B are all actually my numbers here. So um, my side effect well, my side effect is I just don't want I just don't want the um, uh, I just don't want the actual quotient. But let's say if something were to actually go wrong, maybe you know I get back something that is uh, uh, maybe an error. What 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 happens if this get, if this results in an error? If this results in an error, uh, the signature the signature of this method would change into something like uh, something 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 like that, where n basically represents rep represents the side effect. The side effect in this case being the error that might that might get raised from my method. Alternatively, I would say well okay. Look, um, this is fine, but what if I really want to count? I really want to count the number of times the number of times my division is actually occurring. Meaning, um, instead of having C and A actually as a number, I could I could I could have C and A belonging to something some, to some kind of a type which might be a term. So I believe in, the, in one of the videos, what I had was uh, I had something when I had a data of uh, of a term is nothing but actually equals to a uh, term of something so there's a term of an integer is uh, could be equal to cons of a that's one of my value constructor and the other value constructor i believe i had uh, i had uh, i had the division of a term and a term all right um so uh, so uh, again Let's make it a little more simpler. Let's say this is nothing but just always an integer. Okay, so uh, so in this case, uh, uh, this is this is the type that I had, that I had defined, and my type was actually actually term. Okay, and uh, I said my term is nothing but equal to it's an algebraic data type, meaning it could have two two of these uh, two of these value value constructors, and um, and my question was um, well. I just want to count. I just want to count the number of times the division is actually occurring, and that's that's the that's the, that's the next thing we're going to look in my next video as how I can use this method that I've just created, the tick method. How can I use the tick method to actually get it implemented in some sense as to how as to the number of times division operator is actually getting occurred.